to the final section of this week's Weed Talk News. We call it the C Block. We want to welcome a new reporter to our team, Lisa Williams. She hails from Texas and has a business called the Toke Agency. Here's an amazing story out of that state that shows how out of control some of our political leaders have become. The Texas governor is going after local cities who have already voted to decriminalize cannabis in their city. So the governor said he might have to sue those towns because they are challenging state law. Here's Lisa. I'm Lisa Williams, founder of the Toke Agency with the Texas Cannabis Report for Weed Talk News. Grab your Lone Star flag and a bowl of Bluebell because we've got some spicy Texas cannabis news for you. This week, the House of Representatives showed their compassionate side by advancing a bipartisan bill that aims to expand the state's medical marijuana program. This exciting bill, HB 1805, could allow those suffering from chronic pain to access medical cannabis as an alternative to opioids. The bill's journey isn't over as it's headed to the Senate where it might face some roadblocks. But if it passes, it would be a major win for cannabis advocates and patients alike who have been seeking broader access to the state's limited medical marijuana program. The slow green wave of voter-driven marijuana decriminalization hits the largest city in the South Plains this weekend as Lubbock residents vote on a proposed ordinance that would decriminalize small amounts of marijuana. It's a test, not just for the movement, but the direct democracy in the Lone Star State. The proposed ordinance, if approved, would instruct Lubbock police to stop arresting adults for possession of less than four ounces of marijuana in most cases. Governor Greg Abbott recently weighed in on the issue of Lubbock's marijuana decriminalization initiative. While not taking a specific position on the ordinance, he emphasized that cities shouldn't override state law. Abbott highlighted that this issue extends beyond marijuana and warned that allowing cities to choose which state laws to enforce could lead to chaos in Texas. He encouraged those seeking changes in marijuana legislation to work with their state legislatures instead of pursuing local ordinances. That's the Texas Cannabis Report. I'm Lisa Williams, founder of the Toke Agency, reporting for Weed Talk News. The small but growing multi-state operator Nova Farms is celebrating a $20 million capital infusion from Chicago Atlantic. That will help build out their vertically integrated facilities in Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Here's Jill Goldsbury with more in her New Jersey Cannabis Report. Hey guys, I'm Jill with the Garden State Can- Garden State Cannabis Report, and here's what's happening in our area. Cannabis sales in New Jersey are up 38% from this time last year. Sales have totaled between January and March of 2024 to over $201 million. Most of these sales are from the increase in licensed dispensaries that are now open, which are totaling hundred over 100 shops currently. And the weekend of 420, on the day of 420, sales topped $5 million with a weekend closeout of $12.5 million. That's a lot of flour, guys. In other news, Women Power dominated this weekend as we celebrated with the biggest cannabis parade uh, in New York City, featuring a complete march down Broadway, speakers, vendors, and ending the night with a huge party celebrated at the THC Museum thrown by Canna Divas and Tribe Tokes. It was it definitely looked like it was a time with female bosses, owners, and marching down, marching for equality, partying for equality and equity in this space. Uh, We also noticed there was a female band in the parade in front of the Canadivas. So that was definitely a sight to be seen. Uh, 
And I took a little trip out to Nikan, Maryland to see what was going on there and caught the business track panel of New Jersey, including regulators such as Diane Hunu of, C of the CRC, New Jersey, former General Assemblyman and Executive at Township Green Dispensary, Scott Rudder, and Attorney Bill Caruso, all discussing the benefits of bringing cannabis business to New Jersey from the state of Maryland. And I'm hearing grumblings about a popular New Jersey brand that is set to launch in Maryland very soon. And I'll keep you posted on that as soon as that is confirmed. And we will also find out more about the other things that are happening, brands that, other brands that may be coming from Maryland to New Jersey. And we'll keep you posted on that. That's it for now. I'm Jill Goldsbury with the Garden State Cannabis Report. See you next time. Last but not least, here's an excerpt from the Cannabis Legalization News Show with our Illinois cart correspondent, Thomas Howard, and sidekick, Miggy420. I don't know what's going to happen with him. We know we do know something about him. There's going to be a new definition of him. Or like, there's going to be a double definition of him. Stick around for that. Right now, right? the biggest story of the week was just a confirmation. Something that we had been knowing about for, oh, uh, since pretty much September 1st of last summer, when we saw the memo directing HHS, I'm sorry, HHS directing DEA to reschedule okay. cannabis based on the facts and the science that HHS and FDA had. Uh, we got confirmation. We did not get an email about no. it. And so Mickey and I got an email about something else. We did get an email. But, you know, something you, yeah. it's something, but just as awesome. But, well, you know, yeah. Phenomenal. But, you know, one of the hottest takes I think I got from this, from the Twitterverse, you know, I'm going to still call it that. But uh, on this whole situation is, it was just a leak still, right? It, it hasn't been any final approval. hasn't been anything that's been enacted. There is no thing happening. You know, like they, it was just confirmed that the DEA is going to go along with what they were told to do eight months ago. Is they it's it's part of the so the executive is going to be asking for different monies, and so when they ask for those monies, it goes into the budget, and so then they're going to figure out how to pay for this new regulatory scheme that they're going to have. And so it was the same thing like with hemp. When so because like with hemp, and then there's you know there's news about hemp that we'll get to after yes. we talk about Schedule Three a little bit more. Right. Um, with with hemp, like when they published that rule, it was it took a little bit longer for it to go like final, I think, because of COVID. But then mm -hmm. uh, they had mechanisms to test. And so those still have not come to fruition in the sense that all the hemp that's cultivated is not tested by DEA approved labs yet. And they just okay. keep continuing that out. And finally tonight, not sure about you, but there are many people who are obsessed with the royal family, whether in England or the American-based couple of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The London media is still tracking the adventures of the royals, and in this case, not afraid to report on rumors. And yes, it has cost many publishers legal fees to squelch liability claims. Well, there was a rumor that Meghan Markle was going to produce a cooking show for Netflix on a cannabis farm. Well, that has been put to bed by a source close to the princess, but that didn't stop the London press from splashing that rumored report all over the place. So you have to like sympathize with the family that has very little privacy when they leave their property. Thanks to uh, the paparazzi who follow them everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, they'll be fine. That's, we talk news for the week. I'm Elena Pinto. And remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. What if we're right? What if all of a sudden they discover that there is medical use for marijuana and, and that it is good for you and it's better than alcohol and it's better than opioids and it helps your health. What if we're right? What if they find that out? Specific cannabinoids have medical value. Uh, these are facts. I'm here today in hopes to assist in removing the demonized stigma of cannabis and the perception that cannabis is just about getting high. 
The true base of this plant has to be known. I don't think anybody should ever go to jail for cannabis. Get some medicine and everybody should have access to it. This is something which at the very, very least is the key to alleviating suffering and extending life for millions of human beings. For returning some kind of balance to our society and quite possibly of restoring our planet's natural balance as well.